welcome to This is Pikeville. Jimmy Taylor, Director of Tourism, City of Pikeville, and Minta Trimble, Main Street Director for the City of Pikeville. Join me, as always, to talk about some great events that have happened and that are going to happen in the City of Pikeville. Always a fun time to get together, guys. Hey. It really is. Hey. How you doing, Jill? I am great. One thing, I want to start with Minta today because one of the most recent events that we just had was your third annual wine tasting and retail gating that is such a fun event. It really is because people get a chance to walk, you know, stop in the shops, mm -hmm. stop on the streets, kind of mingle around and get a taste wine as they're doing that. And it kind of creates just an open air atmosphere on 2nd Street that everybody loves. Really does. The weather was great this year. No rain in the forecast, so it was really, really nice. But talk about the winery that you had, Kim, because they have some local ties. They do have local ties. They're originally from Elkhorn City, Joe and Francine Sloan. And some of their relatives came to me that works for, well, he works for UMG, but his wife is related to them, and said, you know, we, we know someone that would love to do something downtown, and you know, just as, can, we, can we feature them as a winery? And I said, yes, I've heard of this one retail gating event, and that was in a different state. And I said, let's put those two things together and see how they go. Retail gating, meaning that the merchants get a chance to display their goods and trucks on the sidewalk or just whatever fall kind of thing they want to do, and then invite artisans and farmer's market and the winery. So it's a fall, small, uh, a fall, a small farm winery. That's hard to say when you're thinking about fall. <laughs> So they're from Lawrenceburg, so they come every year, and we, we love having them. One of the things that I noticed that was really fun is that we had so many local vendors that were not just with our shops downtown, but local vendors um, that were not necessarily right in the main downtown area that came to set up their booths um, and display their goods. Absolutely. That's what we want. We want everyone local. We kind of look at it as, you know, we invite the downtown merchants, but then we also invite the merchants that maybe aren't located downtown that exist in the city that want to spend that day, you know, also showing everyone, well, they're a part of everything too. So we, we welcome everyone. It really is a fun event. Jimmy, I know that you uh, were out early that morning. I and, was. and Minta was out early that morning and your entire Main Street um, board was there making sure everything was set up in place. But I know that you had a chance to speak to a lot of the different vendors and get their thoughts on, on this type of event it, happening downtown. It, it was really a great event. Uh, we had a lot of people come out and uh, enjoy it. We had a lot of people at the shops shopping locally. Rising Suns did a great job with their winery, dueling barrels, and their beer garden did phenomenally well. You had music on the stage, Johnny Pop Day, and mm -hmm. uh, the app provided some entertainment as well. It was a, it was a great event, and uh, yeah, Main Street does a phenomenal job. Thank you, Jimmy. Not without those guys, though. You know, we were there, like you said, early setting up really early, and uh, Brenda at Rustic Groups helps us get some of the artisans in, but she also has an artist each year do what we call the art bar. And that's kind of like on Grace Avenue to where they can do little portraits or paintings. Or This year it was a spooky scene, I think, and it was just really good for the children and adults to be able to do art right there on the street. And so we love it. The only bad thing this year was it was a little warm. <laughs> so we were thinking maybe next year to go a little later in the evening and uh, see how that works. So, but we're already planning for next year. But it, was a still, it was still a really good event that uh, people had... Uh, wine and beer they cool off with. They did because Dueling Barrels, like you said, set up on the street and it gave us a good opportunity to feature their pumpkin, their pumpkin beer. It was really nice and already looking forward to next year. And like you say, you start planning uh, midday on, on, on this year. You already start exactly. planning for next year. Yeah, before they leave town. And, you know, we, we have different concepts. We want it to grow. We want it to be larger. This year we did extend up Division Street a little bit more. And next year we want to be able to make that just as many little streets as we can get involved and, yeah. and more businesses. Great event. One of the other things coming up new for this year, and I know you're excited about it, is the Dead Ball. So let's explain a little bit about what that is. Right. The name kind of came up as a dance, a Halloween party dance. And uh, so we called it the Dead Ball. And we took that from some of our local Mm, grave sites at the cemetery <laughs> because we thought we wanted to kind of feature on history and our history history and a couple of the board members filmed up at the cemetery at Octavia Hatcher's grave and we thought well, what a cool concept if somebody could recreate Octavia and her husband you know to come and dance and celebrate Halloween but this is a more so a fundraiser <clears throat> and also a good way for us to partner with the Appalachian Center for the Arts to show their facility and what they have to offer so we'll be doing that on October the 19th, and it's from 8 in the evening till midnight. And you dress as 
the dead, dress as a zombie, dress as in your regular Halloween costume. I mean, I've heard just all kinds of different things. But tickets are $25. That includes your food. We call it the gruesome grub. <laughs> and then the Appalachian Center for the Arts is providing a cash bar. So we feel like this is just a great opportunity for people to have a little fun. It is for 21 and over. Um, but also use this as another fundraiser for Main Street to pursue more downtown art projects. We were really, really proud about our ghost lettering and that came from our other fundraising, you know, things that we have. So this gives us, gives us a little other opportunity to raise some money. You're going to have a lot of fun with it too. Absolutely. Also in the same Halloween uh, spirit and vein, the 5K zombie run is going to take place on the 26th. 26th. The morning of the 26th. Uh, I think this was going to be a night run, but Charlie Daniels is going to be in town, I think on the 26th, the evening at the arena. So we switched it to the morning. Zombies travel pretty much all day long, from what I understand. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're asking them to run and walk. But anyone that wants to participate, it's $25 as well. And for both those events, they can register at PikevilleMainStreet.com. For the zombie run, we're asking that you donate five cans of food. And for that, you get a free T-shirt. And the food will be uh, dispersed, you know, to either the homeless shelter or the blessing boxes. Just wherever we feel, you know, that it needs it downtown. But we thought this was a great way, since zombies are always chasing food around that we've kind of asked them to bring their own that day. Great addition. I, one of the things I want to talk to you and Jimmy both about, um, we're finally in fall. Yes. We it, is, it seemed like it was never going to get here. It was, has been so hot and so dry, but we did get some rain recently and, and things are really starting to liven up with a little bit of color, but Pikeville is a great place to visit during the fall season. Absolutely. Uh, uh, especially around Bob Amos Park where we have all the hiking and uh, riding trails. You can come up uh, Muddy Boots has uh, specials going on all month, so you can either uh, go up on horseback and see the leaves changing. We've got 2.2 miles of multi-use trails and probably four plus miles total of just hiking trails. So we've got a beautiful place on the mountain to get away from everything because when you're there, you don't know you're in the, you wouldn't even know you're in the city. You would not, you absolutely not. And I know, Minta, when you travel about all over the state with other Main Street directors and, and the different conferences that you go to, people always uh, comment about Pikeville and the way that it looks and the beauty um, that that is the downtown area. And certainly fall is a perfect time for that. It is absolutely. You know, Pikeville, some people don't realize it's, it's kind of shaped in a horseshoe. It's kind of nestled in the mountains. So you get that beautiful visual of the trees changing, you know, when you're all around, uh, you know, just walking around we're driving through but what we you know I was looking at today and this is just kind of ironic about the leaves changing and how everybody kind of leaves town no pun intended but leaves town <laughs> oh, anyway um, and I was like checking the rates of hotels away from here within a three hour or something like that radius to see what would it be if you took a weekend excursion away from here but then I thought, oh my goodness, how affordable it would be to stay here and ask people to come and walk around downtown and you know, eat and just kind of go up to Bob Amos or maybe go to the breaks and stuff because it's so much more affordable. It's such a wonderful weekend trip, especially this time of year. The peak season is getting ready to come up with the leaves and so it's a great opportunity to see those. It really is and we always want to invite everybody to come in and uh, we're really good about, both of you are really good about making sure that the public is aware of what's going on via your Facebook page. So let's tell each one, uh, Minta, how do people get to your Facebook page? It's Pikeville Main Street on Facebook so they can do that as that. They can follow us on Instagram which is Pikeville Main Street and then if they want to send an email, email it's um, minta.trimble at pikevilleky.gov. And Jimmy, you have the Pikeville City Tourism Facebook as well that you're always on and, and also on Twitter and also Instagram, so all over it. Pikeville City Tourism on Facebook. Uh, visit Pikeville, Twitter, and Instagram. Mm -hmm. And you can also download our app. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm always going to plug the app. It's a brand new. It's design, redesigned, and it's so much easier to use now. Uh, instead of like a uh, list view, you're getting a scroll view, so you it's, you're always moving with the app and whatever you're looking for is right there on your screen at that time. We are also going to talk about the many, many events going on at Appalachian Wireless Arena. So Larry Miller is going to join us. Larry Miller, Assistant General Manager at the Appalachian Wireless Arena joins us now. And Larry, you literally have your hand on everything going on at the arena and you are so busy with so many different things that are being planned but one of the events that just happened and we've mentioned it um, 
around town and, and on a few other shows that we've done is Hoptoberfest, the third year of Hoptoberfest on the plaza at the arena. And this year, a lot of people participated. Well, they did. We had approximately 500 people that showed up. There was uh, 87 different, different flavors of beer, if you will. Uh, represented everything from, um, I think, porters to lagers to uh, IPA. So it was a really good event. This is something that's really grown over the past couple of years, too. How have you seen, um, or what comments have you heard as, as this has progressed from people that have attended? Uh, well, it's, it's grown in, in numbers. When we started, it started as Taps and Caps, and we changed the name on the uh, second go-around. We started with about 250 people, and it's worked its way up to uh, the 500 that we see today. There was several things in town that I think we would have had a, a, an even bigger crowd, mm -hmm. but there were several things that was going on. You are, the 82 craft vendors you're talking about, they were all over the southeastern United States, right? They came from everywhere. We had beers from, uh, from all around the United States, and we also had coverage of, of some local beers as well with Doolin Barrels. So this is something that you see a lot of other uh, communities start to embrace with microbreweries popping up um, in a lot of different locations. And certainly Pikeville is, is being now recognized as one of those destinations with, with the distillery, of course, and now with uh, Broken Drone opening up very soon. So Pikeville really is going to be a destination for the folks that like to travel to these different types of events. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, sorry, Jimmy. It's okay, brother. Uh, it's a great boost for the economy is what I was going to say. Uh, your Hoptoberfest event, uh, I think it really helped some of the local uh, shops in downtown also. It did. There was a lot of people going out, and they were exploring downtown Pikeville. They, uh, they seemed to really enjoy it. Uh, a lot of people from out of the area came in. They were really impressed with town. Uh, it, I think it just shows people everything we have to offer when they come to events like this. Absolutely. So. Absolutely so. That's why we plan so many of them and we'll continue to do so. One of um, the most exciting events that we have that goes on in the city, and one of the biggest, uh, undoubtedly, is Nightmare on Main, and that is rapidly approaching. And the two of you um, enjoy that event, but really open up the arena for um, all kinds of fun, and the seeing the kids come through there is really a delight. That's one of my main events of the year. I love it. The, that and Winterfest, when Nightmare on Main, when you see all the kids that come in throughout the day and the smiles on their face from all the candy they get and the, the uh, interaction with the characters that we have there, uh, uh, even our special needs portion of the day from 9 a.m. to noon, uh, they get a really great taste of uh, characters and they get a taste of the candy and inflatables. Uh, they have a really good time. and. Um, I'm going to have to say, the, all the adults that come, they, they have a great time, too. They seem to have a good time as well. They one, do. One of the um, additions this year that we are incorporating or that you have been really um, instrumental in incorporating is a series of Snapchat filters that people who, you know, there there are lines, you know, people know there that. Are. But as you're standing in line this year, you've got your mobile device there, you've got your phone, and you're going to be able to to see a few different Snapchat filters that are going to be a lot of fun for the There's whole family. There's going to be uh, from four to six Snapchat filters available. Um, You'll be able to get them in and around the arena. and uh, It's just one of the many, I think, uh, photo opportunities that you're going to have. And I'll be running contests on our page for the best Snapchat filter. So be prepared. Bring your phone. Have a good time. Uh, post on our social media site, and uh, you could win a great prize. Very good. Larry, this takes a lot of effort to get the arena set up for for an event like this with so many families and so many kids coming in. Talk a little bit about what it what starts in the morning, how, how long it takes to get this kind of event set up and make sure that everything is in place for that evening. We actually start prepping as soon as possible, usually usually the night before because it's such an elaborate setup. You have uh, the concourse with all the tables, all the vendors are coming in throughout the day. Uh, we park the cars throughout the arena to give away the trunk or treat candy. Um, the floor, it's a, it's a huge setup as well, as Jimmy mentioned. We have all the inflatables. We have the uh, superheroes, the lighting. There is the Batmobile. The Batmobile. Uh, everything goes into this. Um, I think there, are, are we doing the, the dance mob this year as well? Uh, we are. Uh, though, actually, I think there'll be two different types of dance mobs this year. But what Larry is really underselling you on what he does, he's not telling you that he has an event before this one that he has to break down for 
before he sets up for Nightmare on Main. He's being very modest. <laughs> he's going to be working very hard those three or four days to try to get ready for Nightmare on Main. And it's well worth it, I think. It, it is. We have we actually have three events in a row. So there's a setup, a breakdown, and a setup, if you will. Yeah. So. And that's something I think a lot of people um, don't realize is the number of events that actually happen in the arena that maybe the general public doesn't know about. I mean, Nightmare, I mean, obviously is a largely publicized event that a lot of people come to, but you have so many different conferences and meetings and events and concerts. We're going to talk about that in just a few minutes that go on that requires so much effort and attention to detail. Um, and what I want to commend you on too is that you all seem to have it down to a fine art to get to set up and tear down and set back up yes, right after. We have a phenomenal team. Uh, everyone has came in and they they fit their place well. Everyone has it's just a working, if you will, machine, and everyone has their own area and expertise, and they handle it well. Yeah, so. it always goes off without a hitch. I'm always impressed when I go over there. I look around and I think, how do y'all do it? And every time, it is it is spot on. I can hit Larry with uh, odds and ends from an event, and it'll be like last minute. And he's I'm notorious for doing that last minute <laughs> thing, and he'll say, I got you. Don't worry about it. I got this. And Always like nice to yeah. know that, that, that Larry's got your back and he can take care of you. He does. His staff really does a phenomenal job. But I do want to talk about not only do you take care of Appalachian Wireless Arena, which is a very, very large facility, Appalachian Center for the Arts is something that you also manage and take care of. And there's a number of events that are happening there that we want to talk about. Yes, uh, Robin is doing a phenomenal job there as well. She's, uh, she's booking and setting up, and she's even starring in these plays. And she's, she's amazing. Yeah. You can't say enough about Robin. I, I agree. So we just had Sally McCoy mm -hmm. coming up at the app. We also have Frozen Junior. That yes. is going to be just a lot. Because if you want people to come to an event, you put the kids in it. You do. And, and, but really, it's going to, be, uh, going to be a great, great production. And then going into Christmas, there will also be a Christmas show as well. There will, and uh, well, not only well, you, you went to them, but I have to tell about what we've got coming up as well. I got to brag a little bit. Okay. This is probably throughout town, and with both facilities, we have more downtown than we've probably ever had before. Mm -hmm. uh, with Robin and her crew in, in involved, we also have Newsboys. Yeah. We have something for every genre. We just finished rock. Uh, Newsboys, I'll tell you a little bit about it. It's October the 20th. Tickets range from 29 to 79, and there's a VIP gold package. Um, Charlie Daniels, everyone yeah. loves the little, little Charlie Daniels. Mm -hmm. So the tickets start at 38.50, and they go up to 58.50. And then Chris Jansen, he's uh, everyone knows Chris Jansen. He's good vibes. Yeah. So we're sticking, we're, we're sticking with a little bit of country there. We just did rock. Uh, the tickets are 28.50 and up from that. One. And you can get those on Ticketmaster, or you can walk up to the Community Trust Bank box office and get your okay. tickets that way. One of the shows I do want to talk to you about, though, because it really has blown everybody's mind. It I has. mean, it's just one of those things that everybody is talking about. Uh, it's been a, a couple of years, maybe, or maybe a little bit longer, since we've had a huge New Year's Eve show. So it became known that Tyler Childers was going to put on a New Year's Eve show, and then he was going to do an additional show. And then it became so big that there had to be a third. Mm -hmm. What was that process like? That was, <laughs> we knew what we had when, when the tickets still started with the fan club. They went so well. And then the management from Tyler Childers got back in touch with us and they were like, well, let's add another show. Well, okay, great, let's, <laughs> let's do two. And then the fan club also bought those tickets. So that we had to have something for on sale date and we opened the third show to do an on sale. Uh, it's unprecedented, we've never, done anything like that at the Appalachian Wireless Arena. You know, we did two Chris Stapleton shows, but yeah. never three. Yeah. I think we uh, we set records here for uh, Eastern Kentucky and Pikeville, especially. Really is becoming a destination. Tyler Childers so amazingly popular Number one song. Uh, right now. And and I, I look forward to, obviously, to him being here. I was all excited to get my tickets, too, as many of my friends were. But just to have that name here mm -hmm. and to be able to have three shows, that doesn't happen. Never. In other places. No. It does not. So we were really excited to welcome him in, and and I know that you all were so excited to be able to do that and to have that yes. offer. Uh, very, very excited. I can't express enough. Uh, just, 
just the thrill of doing three shows. I know we're going to be tired, mm -hmm. and I know it's going to be a long, and you're going to help. I'll, you, no I'll just problem. Volunteer again. <laughs> You've been recruited. I got you. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a long three days. But, like I said, it's it hadn't, a New Year's show hadn't been done in years. You know, we did a little bit of a New Year's party last year. We tried it, and we saw there was a market, and Paul Bowles knocked this one out of the park. Yeah. He is amazing. He, uh, he's a genius when it comes to booking and setting up routes. What yeah. can you say? So now, am I right? Are they all sold out every there, show? There are a few tickets left. There's some obstructive view. There's uh, some that, you know, that are set up as holds just for mm -hmm. his family. And mm -hmm. those may, depending on which show his family decides to come to, they'll, they'll be yeah. opening up. So. But essentially. Essentially, it's sold out. It's, it's, one, of those, yeah. it's one of those sellouts. It so is. we're excited for that. Going to have a lot of people. You know, you never know when you're going to have people in town that have never been here before. And it, it will choose to stay in Pikeville. Be at the arena and play in the mountains. How about that, Jim? Absolutely. Taylor? Play in the mountains. We love it when they do. <laughs> we do. Uh, Larry, we also have the one thing that we failed to mention, Harlem Globetrotters. There mm -hmm. is something for everybody, and that's always a fun show. It is. This is, uh, I think, the third time that I've, I've actually done this show. It's probably one of my favorites. I love seeing this one come back. And as Jimmy mentioned before with the children and the participation you get, that's one of those shows that the children actually get on the floor they uh, get to have a good time with the uh, basketball players. They participate and, and run drills. And you just, you don't see things like that done today. So. I think Jimmy should participate and run some of those drills too. I think oh that would be goodness, amazing. Oh my that would just be phenomenal. Wouldn't that be fun? Well, at least a good so layup, right? <laughs> Why not? I love Why not? He could take one of those and try to, you know, spin it the ball finger. on my finger, yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd buy a ticket for that. And this is how sure. we do it. And this is, that's exactly right. This is always how we get Jimmy to participate. <laughs> <laughs> it is always a fun time of the year. But also, you know, we have the concerts. We have the Globetrotters. We have um, different events that happen. But it's also available, you know, for your parties, mm -hmm. for your small groups, for your conventions. And Andrea does a great job booking those events. Andrea is probably one of the best in the business. Not probably. I know she is. She's wonderful. She makes everything happen with with from uh, sound and technical to just the setup and, and being, being just a wonderful setup. Yeah, she, she does really a, is. She does a great job. I, as, as I use her for some different things, all I have to do is say, Andrea, this is what I need. This is how many people are coming. Can you fix it? Mm -hmm. She's like, I got gotcha. you. Just kind of like Larry does. Andrea, we'll fix great. It. She is. You can book the arena, Appalachian Center for the Art, and the upcoming Overlook. And I know you were just up there the other day looking over some things. It's going to be a great facility. Listen, this is going to be the jewel of, of the mountains. If you want to uh, have an event, I, I foresee this being the place to have it. Mm -hmm. I do, too. Mm -hmm. uh, so you've got schools you, you, the, for proms, weddings. And the view up there, I have to say, pal, is absolutely amazing. It is. It is. I've got a, I've got a picture on my, on my page. I'm, I'm going to post it to the ring. You need to, yes, couple. sir. People. It is. I've seen a couple pictures right now, and it's, it's a, it's pretty phenomenal. Looking forward to that being finished. Jimmy, one more thing. We've talked about, you know, fall is here. Tourism is uh, up in its game. We have zip paddle saddles still going on. You can get horseback for. Um, for a discounted price right now, depending on how long of the ride you want to take? $10 discount uh, through October. Yeah. Uh, Dana's got a, uh, a stable full of horses. Uh, all of them are trail ridden, trail trained horses. Uh, she has uh, Allison, which is a very good tour guide. And um, I think that you're going to love it if you come and visit because you get to see the leaves changing, you get yeah. to see all the what the mountains have to offer here mm -hmm. in the city of Pikeville. Absolutely, and like you said, you don't feel like you're in the city when you get up in the mountains. You absolutely you don't do hear not. the road noise, you don't hear anything except just nature, and that's that's one of the beautiful parts of our areas that we get to enjoy a little bit of everything. Absolutely. The visitor center is located inside of Appalachian Wireless Arena. We want to encourage everybody to stop by there and get their literature and maybe some Pikeville merchandise and arena merchandise. Not only uh, not only Pikeville merchandise, but uh, tours that you can look through, you can uh, uh, see what Pikeville has to offer, not only Pikeville, but our region, uh, Floyd County, Johnson County, Letcher County. Uh, we've got everything set up, so when you are when you do visit here, you will know what you can do. Uh, stay in Pikeville, play in the mountains. Absolutely. A lot of fun, a lot of great things coming up, both at Appalachian Wireless Arena and in the city of Pikeville. When we meet next month, we will talk a lot about Winterfest coming up and how you can ice skate in the Pikeville City Park. One of the biggest events that we have, one of the prettiest, and Absolutely. some changes coming this year. We'll talk about that when we get together next time. I think we'll also be talking about trucks. Mm -hmm. We will.
Ah, oh, trucks. Yeah, we'll trucks. be talking about trucks along right. with motorcycles. So. Okay. All right. That's a little bit of tease right there. Just a little bit All of tease. Right. Larry Miller, thanks so much for joining us today. Pleasure was mine. Jimmy, always a pleasure. Always you. This has been This is Pikeville. Thank you so much for joining us.